I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25, we are looking at the instructions that God gives to Moses for the building, <clears throat> excuse me, of the furniture in the tabernacle and the tabernacle itself. And we began yesterday looking at this golden candlestick. Let's read the verses once again that have to deal with this golden candlestick. And then we'll continue to look at it today. It says in Exodus 25 and verse 31, Thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall be the candles, shall the candlestick be made, his shaft and his branches, his bowls and his knops and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knob and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a knob and a flower. So in the six branches that came out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds, with their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all their vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. So we began yesterday by looking at the purpose of the candlestick, and we saw that the candlestick was symbol of a person. As we see in verse 31 there, it talks about his knops and his flowers and things of that nature. And as we could dig a comparison with what Jesus said about himself in John chapter 8 and verse 12 and John chapter 9 and verse 5, we see once again that the candlestick is a picture for us of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it also is a reminder that his desire for us is that we would walk in the light of God's word and that we would not be a people that are given to ignorance of what God says in his word. And then as we come into this today, we want to we want to take some time to look at this candlestick here and what it represents for us. First of all, we see in verse 31 that it was made of pure gold. And as we've noticed in some of the other pieces of the furnishings of the tabernacle, that gold pictures for us the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds us of the simple truth that Jesus is God. And uh, we're reminded of that blessed truth that he says, um, you know, that, that he and the Father are one. And, and there's many places that the Word of God tells us that Jesus is God. Uh, Second Tim, uh, First Timothy three sixteen rather reminds us that God was manifest in the flesh, and of course we know that refers to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only did it say that it was made of gold, but if you look in verse uh, thirty one and in other places as well, it tells us that it is beaten gold. Uh, actually, is what he is, and the gold was beaten, uh, the oil was beaten. And as we think about these things being beaten, it is obvious that they speak of the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, when we stop and we think about it, Isaiah 53 is a wonderful passage. Uh, if there's such a thing as a wonderful passage, that reminds us of what the Lord Jesus Christ went through to purchase our salvation. He was despised. He was rejected of men. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Then we also see here that it reminds us of the simple truth that whatever symbolizes, that which symbolizes Christ here sometimes symbolizes his body, which is the New Testament church. And it also sometimes symbolizes individual Christians. Friends, 2 Timothy 3.12 reminds us that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Then we see this one central shaft here, and there were six branches that were hooked up to it. And six, six in the word of God is a number of man, incomplete unless attached to the central shaft, which typifies for us the Lord Jesus Christ. Then notice in verse 37, it says, And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. So 
we see that the purpose of this candlestick was to give light over against it. In other words, the light was to reveal uh, the light was to reveal the candlestick, which is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are seven individual candlesticks, not a seven branch candlestick, but seven individual candlesticks, which represent the seven churches of Asia Minor in Revelation chapter one through chapter three. Friends, let me remind you today, it's very clear according to the teaching of the word of God, that, you know, ultimately Christ is the candlestick. He is the one that we give, that, that gives us our light. But yet at the same time, it's clear as we study the pages of the word of God that each individual church is the body of Christ. And without him in the mix, there is nothing to honor God with. And uh, it says in First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, we find these words. It says, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And of course, that was addressed to the church at Corinth. We see that in the context of the book in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and in verse 2. So as New Testament churches, friends, we need him in our midst. Just as he was in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks in Revelation chapter 1, if we want to be a light for the Lord Jesus Christ and we want to do what it is that he wants us to do, then we must have him in our midst. Friends, nothing else really matters if Jesus Christ is not in the midst of the New Testament assembly. Then we see in back in Exodus chapter 25 that the candlestick was beaten. It was hammered on the anvil. And friends, when we stop and we look at the word of God, we understand that God's greatest men experience this. Moses, uh, Joseph, Daniel, Job, all had this experience. They all went through the furnace of affliction. God put, put, put them through the process of purifying them. And uh, so let me ask you today a simple question as we close our study on the candlestick. Let me ask you, friend, are we shining? God wants a Christian to shine. We know that he is the light of the world, but yet at the same time in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5, 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world. They see that you sit on a hill, cannot be hid. In Matthew 5, 16, he says, Let your light so shine before men that he may that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Philippians 2.15 says this, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as likes in the world. Now the question could be asked, and we don't have a lot of time to look at this, but the question could be asked, as Christians, where can we shine best? And the answer to that question is in a New Testament church. God has designed every in new, every believer to be a part of a New Testament church, to be implemented into that body, to serve in that body, and to understand that we shine best when we are together, when we are in the assembly that God has denoted for this generation. In Revelation chapter 1, and in verse 20, it says, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in thy right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven golden candlesticks, seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And we are to be in the church in order to let our light shine. Also, as we think about these candlesticks, they have oil. And friends, the Holy Spirit within us is the oil. He is what enables us to shine. He is what enables us to be a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ in this age that we live in. He is the one that enables us to live the Christian life. In Romans chapter 8 and in verse 9 it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of Christ dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 it says, What know ye not? that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What is the purpose of our shining? The purpose is not so that people would look at us. Friends, the purpose of our shining is so that people would look at him and understand how wonderful he is. Remember Matthew five sixteen. let your light so shine before men, not so they see you, but so they see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Friends, let me share this and we'll be done. Lamps must be cleaned and adjusted 
to burn properly. Sometimes God needs to adjust us. He needs to clean us so that we can give forth the light that he desires for us to have in our lives and that we're not just creating a bunch of smoke and things of that nature where people aren't really seeing Christ, but it's his desire that we be cleaned, that we be trimmed, that we be adjusted so that Christ could be seen clearly through our lives. Have a great day.